If I had a pill that would extend your life by one day, but it cost a billion dollars, it's unlikely that many people would argue that health insurance should pay for it. We all understand that while the benefit might be real and quantifiable, it's not worth the expense. But what if the pill cost a million dollars? And what if it extended your life by 10 years? Such discussions are about cost effectiveness, and many people hate that topic, but it's important. So important that I think we need to discuss it here for two weeks on Healthcare Triage. At its heart, cost effectiveness gets at how much bang for the buck we're gonna get from a treatment or therapy, how much it costs over how effective it is. Sometimes, rarely, these calculations are simple, but here's a made up straightforward discussion. Let's say you're 42 and you believe you have about 40 years left to live. Then you find out you have a strange gene that'll kill you tomorrow. It sucks, because you'll lose 40 years of life when you die. But then a pharmaceutical company develops a pill. If you take it today, you're cured. You get an extra 40 years of life. If the pill costs a million dollars, then we could say that you're spending about a million dollars over 40 life years or $25,000 per life year gained. Now a million dollars for a pill sounds like a lot, but I've gotta tell you, $25,000 per life year gained, that's considered pretty cost effective. Very few therapies in medicine get to that level. But if we have a therapy, and we know what it costs, and we know how many years of life it gets you, then we can calculate cost effectiveness. But what about the many, many, many therapies that don't necessarily extend life, they improve it? How do we measure those things? Costs are the same, but we need a better measure of effectiveness. Measuring quality, though, isn't necessarily easy. The best metric we have at the moment is what we call a utility value. It's a number somewhere between zero and one, where zero represents death and one represents perfect health, and it provides us a measure of how much people value life in a health state. There are two main ways to acquire utility values, and they're somewhat time intensive, but I'm gonna model both of them for you today. The first is the standard gamble. In this demonstration, Aaron with the green jacket's gonna administer the test, and Aaron with the black jacket is going to take it. For this test, I want you to imagine that you have a moderate seizure disorder. About once a month, you have a seizure, and during the seizure, you become unconscious and have violent shaking of your arms and legs. Your back arches and your eyes roll back. It lasts three to eight minutes each time. The seizures rarely disrupt work, but you can't drive because of them, and you can't participate in many activities. Mm, okay. This doesn't affect your life expectancy at all. You get a full life, but you have a moderate seizure disorder with everything I just described in it. Got it. Now imagine there's a new treatment available for moderate seizure disorder. The treatment is painless, and if it works, you're instantly and completely restored to perfect health. But the treatment is risky. Some people who have the treatment can instantly die. I want you to imagine you have to choose whether to undergo this treatment. If the treatment had a 50% chance of making you perfectly healthy and a 50% chance of killing you, would you take the treatment? Are you kidding me? A 50% chance of killing me? I still have a job, I'm still married, I still have kids, I'm still making healthcare triage? No way, too risky. Okay, what if it had a 75% chance of making you perfectly healthy and a 25% chance of killing you? Would you take the treatment? No, still too risky. I can't take a 25% chance of it killing me. What if it had an 88% chance of making you perfectly healthy and a 12% chance of killing you? Would you take the treatment? Okay, now you're making me think. I would like to drive. I'd like to do other stuff like ski. Still, no. What if it had a 94% chance of making you healthy and a 6% chance of killing you? Would you take the treatment? 94% chance of success? I might do that. Yes, I think I would. What about a 91% chance of making you healthy and a 9% chance of killing you? Would you take the treatment? Mm, yes, but that's as low as I'd go. 91% chance of success. And that's how you do a standard gamble. And whatever number you end with is considered the utility value for the health state you're investigating. In this case, 91% or 0.91 is the utility value for moderate seizure disorder. Now let's go to the time trade-off. Let's start over. You're 42, so let's imagine that you have about 40 years left to live. You still have a moderate seizure disorder and everything that comes with it, okay? Yep. Now imagine that there's a new treatment available for this condition. The treatment's painless, and if it works, you'll be restored to perfect health. But the treatment shortens your life. If the treatment shortens your life by 20 years, would you choose the treatment, or would you choose 40 years with a moderate seizure disorder? Losing 20 years? No, I'd live with the moderate seizure disorder. What if the treatment shortens your life by 10 years? Would you take the treatment or 40 years with a moderate seizure disorder? 30 years of perfect health or 40 years of moderate seizure disorder? 
Still the latter. What if the treatment shortens your life by five years? Would you take the treatment or 40 years with a moderate seizure disorder? I'd lose what? The years when I'm 77 to 82 and I'd still get to live to 77 and no more seizures ever? Yeah, I'd probably do it. What about- No, no, that's it. Five years is all I'm gonna give up. And that's the time trade-off. In this case, we take the ratio of the two lifespans, 35 years of perfect health over 40 years with the disease, and we get a utility of 0.88. Now, you may be wondering what the values are for many other illnesses. There's much less research in this area than I'd like, but my IU colleague Steve Downs and I have conducted what I think is the largest utility assessment of pediatric health states ever. We did more than 4,000 of these standard gambles and time trade-offs and established a dictionary of them for other researchers and clinicians to use. They're available in the Journal of Pediatrics linked down below. How do we use them? That's the topic of next week's healthcare triage.